My show tonight is possibly one of the most contentious shows we have ever made. If my guest is correct, our nation no longer exists as a sovereign state. Our leaders, past and present, including Her Majesty the Queen, have committed treason. Parliament will shortly be abolished, and we will find ourselves as slaves to a Soviet-style European Politburo. My guest is a computer expert who has worked all over the world, including in New York for major companies such as J.P. Morgan Chase Bank, and who stood for Parliament in 2005 as a UKIP candidate, and also stood for that party's leadership. He flies planes, races yachts, and is one of the leading anti-European Union campaigners. His website, www.eutruth.org.uk, receives over 6,000 visitors a month. And he has driven here tonight from somewhere in continental Europe. Yes, really. He is David Noakes. What a show we've got tonight. David, welcome. Thanks, Theo. Good to meet you. Yes, good to meet you. Um, now, you've been an activist, an anti-EU activist for, for a while. How did you become aware that maybe there was another side to this European Union that perhaps we weren't being told? Well, it was 1997, and I was actually in the USA working at the time, and <clears throat> it became obvious to me that the, uh, whatever we voted for in England, we didn't get, and the same agenda just Are you, are you kept talking going. about just national elections? Yes. For Parliament? Yes, yes. W it, the will of the people was never being implemented. It didn't matter on what subject. The government was completely ignoring the people. And I started doing some research, and uh, I started reading EU treaties, and I found out why. Okay, and what, what did you discover then? Very simply, that the European Union has the, uh, the constitution of a dictatorship, the laws of a police state, and 120,000 regulations, which, when fully enforced, will drive us into abject poverty, which is their intention. The evidence is absolutely overwhelming, and the BBC should be doing this program, should have done it 30 years ago when the first treaty came along. But everything that I'm saying is happening is in EU treaties. There have been six EU treaties passed by Parliament and signed by the Queen. Yeah, we were lied to. Um, if you read secret documents released from the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, which was the internal government um, illegally foisting the EU were on us. Um, but under the 30-year rule, they've now released these documents, and uh, it's absolutely clear that Ted, Ted Heath knew he was abolishing Britain and expected the nation to be abolished before the end of this century. They spent a total of £461,000 on this campaign to deceive the public, a disinformation campaign. How much? £461,000, according to FCO. 30, 12, 15. No, well, this is 1976, 15. is it? This sort of no, this is 1970. So in today's 70. money, you're probably talking about sort of 40 million. It's not really a general election because all the political parties are controlled by the European Union. The Conservatives have been EU controlled since the 1960s, the Labour and Lib Dems since 1985. Okay. In 1943, von Ribbentrop. Um, held the first summit of the European Union. He was a German Chancellor, wasn't he? Or yes, deeply involved with uh, Nancy Astor and the royal family, our royal family. But the uh, Gotha Sachs Coburgs. Correct. Otherwise known as Windsor. Correct. The Germans. <laughs> um, the more enlightened members of the Nazi High Command had a meeting with big German companies included, like IG Farben, um, where they commissioned the European Union to carry forward German ambitions um, because they could see defeat looming. And Hitler himself commissioned the Deutsche Verteidigungsdienst Intelligence Department to control future development of the European Union. And um, in 1946, that one change you wanted to know about you couldn't sell Nazism to anyone in 1946, so they switched the European Union from a Nazi to a communist basis, and it's been communist ever since. Um, let me just give you an example of the power of the Bilderbergers. 
thing. Margaret Thatcher was a Bilderberger. She had to be, or she couldn't be uh, leader of the Conservative Party and Prime Minister. Uh, but she was a naive Bilderberger, and towards the end of her reign, she realized that the Bilderbergers were building the EU dictatorship, and she made her Bruges speech, and she switched side. She actually came onto our side. Within two months, she was out on the street, and a compliant builder, Bilderberger, John Major, in her place. Now, that's eight Bilderbergers on the Conservative Central Committee who threw her out. That's how much power they have. They decide who will be leader of the party. They decide who we can vote for, and we can only vote for one of them. I use the term justice loosely because this is the court of justice that uh, when Martha Andreessen was fired for revealing the fact that the European Union cannot account for 95% of its expenditure, she was the European Union's budget director at the time, so she should know, that's not 5% of the expenditure of the European Union it can't account for, that's 95% of the expenditure. There's there isn't one business in England that can't count for 95% of its expenditure, but the European Union can't. So when she revealed this... She was fired. And it wasn't her pension removed as well? <laughs> the European Court of Justice held that because she had told, told the truth, her firing was right and proper, and she had forfeited her right to her pension. Um, not a lot of people are aware that the European Union is a military dictatorship, and there's scores of clauses all through the six treaties. For example, page 39 of Lisbon, clause 10 ac 3 Member states shall make civil, civilian and military capabilities available for the, to, to the European Union. Uh, member states shall understate, undertake progressively to improve their military capabilities. So we're looking at three unelected politburos controlling the nuclear weapons of the former nations of Britain and France. And when you put dictators in charge of armies, you always get war. Well, we, <laughs> we're doing quite well in any event, aren't we, in terms of wars? You know, we're, we're having quite a few. Yes. Unless you notice. <laughs> yes, but I think we're talking on a much larger scale here. Really? Yes. We're, we're being trained. The government is training us to dis dislike Muslims and Arabs. That tells us where they're first war's going to be. Well, Iran, is that what yeah. you're saying? Yeah. The, the Middle East, I'm quite sure of it. <laughs> it is quite a shocking <laughs> set of statistics and information, isn't it, this? I mean... Yes, and, and the most stunning thing of it is it's all written down and signed by the Queen. Corpus Juris puts the government above the law. The police have shot dead 30 people since 1992, including that uh, electrician. John Charles de Menezes. Yes, Menezes. he was the highest profile case. Yeah. Um, they've also killed, according to their own records, which they publish as PDF documents, so you can read them, mm -hmm. in custody the police since 1992 have killed no less than 1,100 people. That's 30 shots. That's the British police? The British police, yeah. This is in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland? Correct, and, yes. And, the, yeah. and England, yes. Yeah. Not one successful prosecution has ever been brought against the police for any of these murders and deaths. Why? Because under corpus juris, the government is above the law. So it is now practically impossible to prosecute a policeman for anything. Well, von Ribbentrop was having an affair with Nancy Astor. That's fine, they're both dead. Yes. And the Clifton set... Mosley, the leader of the British Union of Dead. Fascists. Yes, gone. Yep. And the royal family were all very much together. They were all Nazis. Germans. The royal family, as you very well know, is German. It was George III who took over from the Stuarts in 1750, was it? Something like that. And um, they are a German family, and they spoke only German until this century. Um, and... The, uh, the king, which, which king was it? It was Edward VIII, who... He was the wartime king. Was, he, he, well, no, it was George VI. Sorry. Yep. <laughs> he he right. was forced to abdicate with Mrs Simpson as the excuse yeah. 
because he was too rabid a Nazi to be allowed to be king when we were going to war with Hitler. And um, the whole family were Nazi, with the one exception of George VI. No one ever thought he was going to be king because he stuttered and he was a bit further down the list. And so they didn't bother to indoctrinate him in Nazi principles. And so he came to be king, and he and Churchill did a bang-up job in um, keeping us free for another 60 years. Um, the Queen's broken every single one of her coronation oaths, since, including her ones to the Church of England, which um, will almost certainly be abolished and rolled up into the Roman Catholic Church, which will be the Church of the European Union. Um, there's no question that the Queen has committed treason. No question at all. Uh, every every uh, prime minister or minister, anyone who signed an EU treaty has committed treason. There's no, absolutely no question about it. And they got a bit nervous about this in 1998. So after the MPs debated the uh, uh, Crime and Disorder Bill of 1998, Tony Blair added a clause repealing chunks of the Treason Acts because, of course, both he and the Queen should have hung by the neck, neck till dead. And I wish both of them still do. I just would be so happy if all these people had commi who've committed treason were to hang by the neck till dead, particularly the Queen. Communism is favoured by wealthy bankers. So it was a Rothschild in 1917 who financed the um, communist revolution in, in the Soviet Union. And the theory behind that is that if you get a communist government ruthlessly controlling the people, the bankers own the government and therefore the bankers own the whole lot. And the Queen is at that level. She's at the level where she can control through a communist go government and own more through a communist government than she does now. Um, yeah, that's the nasty thing about it, isn't it? I mean, firstly, the EU is completely illegal under the British Constitution in every area. All six treaties are completely illegal. So everybody who signed those treaties, like John Major, yes. Margaret Thatcher, yes. uh, Tony Blair, yes. Gordon Brown... Yes, they're, they're guilty of criminal acts and they're guilty of treason. Uh, in 1999, um, Britain and America, at the same time, deregulated the banks, knowing that they would create massive bubbles that would eventually burst and ruin our economy. And this is why we've not been allowed into the euro. Gordon Brown's five tests to keep us out of the euro weren't Gordon Brown's five tests. They were the European Union's test, tests to keep us out of the euro. Because if they want to destroy us, it's far easier to keep us separate in sterling and destroy Britain and sterling than it is to have us inside the euro and when they try and destroy us with 120,000 regulations, they're going to damage the euro. So you're Far saying... more convenient to keep us outside. So you're saying that the next plan is to destroy the pound? Yes. They have no intention of letting us into the euro. Never did. Well, eventually, I suppose, if they've destroyed the pound, then we become part of the eurozone, is that...? No, no, no. Well, never. We're always going to have a weak pound. No, we're just going to be in poverty. The pound's going to be worthless and we're going to be in poverty. That is their plan. Now we've destroyed, a, well, I don't know who, but we've, we seem to have lost our manufacturing base, our, <clears throat> our mining. Under tourism, but that's, we are designated as a tourist economy in the EU. We are not allowed manufacturing. They want the, the wealth of manufacturing in continental Europe. They want it in Germany. They may want it in France, but they do not want it in England. So that's why we've been forced to close down our manufacturing. The Rover Car Company was closed down by the European Union. 400 million went missing. The Rover car company was sold to friends of Tony Blair for 10 pounds. Yeah. Uh, the Phoenix, they formed a little company called the Phoenix Corporation and, yeah. and, and bought it for 10 quid. Mm. <clears throat> they took 17 million out in salaries in the first year and Rover had a hole in it of 400 million that had just disappeared. And um, <clears throat> uh, of course, what would normally happen is the 400 that had been taken would be replaced by the government to keep our, uh, one of our major car companies going. But no, we weren't allowed to under European competition rules. Now, these competition rules do not apply in Europe. Renault and Citroën 
can have as much um, aid as they want. But we're Britain. It's Britain that has to be destroyed. It's Britain that's not allowed a manufacturing industry. And Margaret Thatcher did a bang-up job of closing down manufacturing, manufacturing on behalf of the European Union. It was her job. As in Europe, then, in mm. this plan, yes. mm. who is number one? The most senior Bilderberger that we're an obviously aware of is Angela Merkel. She seems to give Gordon Brown his orders. Um, who's the top of the pile? Right at the very top, it's probably a Rothschild or, a, or maybe a Rockefeller, but almost certainly a, Ro a Rothschild, um, and quite a few steps in between. And it's all a bit surprising to me that the, the royal family is involved, and they are so senior, but they are very senior in it. And the Queen has been a supporter of the EU throughout her adult life. But she doesn't turn up at Bilderberger meetings, does she? No, that would be a bit... Um, I think Prince Philip has, though. Well, one of the Dutch royal family has. Yes, and of course the whole thing was started off by a relative of theirs, Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands. And the was, uh, first uh, meeting was in the Netherlands, wasn't it, I believe? At the Bilderberg Hotel, and yeah. because he was a former Nazi SS officer. 